there really is only one reason why I'm doing this vlog, and you're gonna have to wait to the end of this vlog to find out why. <laughs> Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and for those of you who may not know, I do these weekly streams with civil rights attorney Robert Barnes, where we talk about the most important legal questions in the world. We talk about thorny constitutional law questions, we go over the election lawsuits, we talk about the sagas from Flynn to the McCloskeys, and the other day he DM'd me a law story, and I began to ask myself what exactly he was suggesting by sending me this article. Son wins lawsuit after mom throws away his best porno mags. Now I am obviously saying this tongue-in-cheek, a bunch of people have actually been messaging me saying that I should do some lighter stories to get away from the heavy stuff, and I think that's why Robert Barnes sent me this article. I think. And I hope. And when I read this article upon receipt, I immediately knew I was definitely going to do a vlog on it, if only for one reason, which you're going to find out about by the end of this vlog. Now, as we're going to see as we dive into the substance of this article, the headline really is more sensationalist than anything else. The questions of law are pretty basic questions of law as relates to the loss or destruction of private property. But for those of you who have been hanging around the channel for long enough, you know that I always say there is the legal element of the practice of law and the human element. And this lawsuit and judgment really highlights the hardest human elements of the practice of law that lawyers have to deal with on a daily basis. By John Agar, Ottawa County, Michigan. A Grand Haven couple will have to pay for disposing of their son's pornography collection. The only question is how much. David Working, 42, sued his parents, Beth and Paul Working, after they tossed out what a judge called, quote, a trove of pornography and an array of sex toys, end quote. U.S. District Judge Paul Maloney in Kalamazoo granted their son's request for summary judgment in his favor. The parties have until mid-February to file written submissions on damages. So, first things first, I bet you are not anticipating that the son in question was going to be 42 years old. That detail might highlight the fact that there are probably a lot more family dynamics going on in this story above and beyond a mere question of law. And can you imagine being the judge that actually has to draft into a final judgment a trove of pornography and an array of sex toys? In as much as the practice of law is tedious on lawyers, it is all the more tedious for judges who not only have to deal with pain in the butt lawyers, they have to deal with cases that should never go to court in the first place. At the heart of too many lawsuits are ultimately family disputes that materialize themselves by ending up in court. But that is the human element of the practice of law. Getting back to the legal aspect of it, the son had made a motion for summary judgment, and that basically means that the parties don't ultimately disagree on any of the facts. They just need the judge to come to a determination in law on the basis of accepted facts among the parties. And the judge came to a conclusion based on the accepted facts among the parties, found the parents liable. Now they just have to determine the quantum, but let's go ahead a little further and see what those facts are because it does get a little more interesting. The parents' attorney, Anne-Marie Vanderbrook, said she is working to establish the value of the items that were disposed of but declined to comment about the case. Dave Working contends damages are around $25,000. His attorney, Miles Greengard, contends that his client should receive treble damages which is allowed under his claim of conversion of property. Now, I had never heard of the term treble damages because it's not a concept that exists under Canadian law as far as I know, so I had to go look it up and this is what treble damages are. In United States law, treble damages is a term that indicates that a statute permits a court to triple the amount of the actual compensatory damages to be awarded to a prevailing plaintiff. Treble damages are a multiple of and not an addition to actual damages in some instances. Interesting, so the son could in theory be awarded upwards of $75,000 from his parents, so maybe this lawsuit became a little more worthwhile, but call me old-fashioned. Not only would I not sue my parents for $25,000, I would pay $25,000 not to have to sue my parents. There are other far more fundamental family issues at play here above and beyond the loss of a porno mag and sex toy collection valued at roughly $25,000. Quote, we have asked the court for treble damages, which we believe are warranted given the wanton destruction of the property, end quote, he said. He was pleased with the judge's ruling. The case wasn't just about a guy and his dirty magazines. Quote, this was a collection of often irreplaceable items and property, end quote, Greenguard said. Okay, I can sort of accept that reasoning. Some people have unique collections. I collect fossils, some people collect stamps, and other people collect dirty magazines and sex toys. Who am I to judge? But when I talk about other underlying family issues at play here, this is what I'm talking about? Do I have someone breaking into my office? Uh, I have to hide a present in your office. Okay, well, I'm doing a vlog about a son who sued his parents for destroying his $25,000 porno mag and sex toy collection. That's really weird. Why, is that what you got me for Christmas? No. <laughs> 
His client had moved into his parents' home in late 2016 after a divorce. After he left for Muncie, Indiana, he expected them to deliver his belongings. He later realized that a dozen boxes of pornographic films and magazines were missing. His father said in an email, quote, Frankly, David, I did you a big favor getting rid of all this stuff, end quote. The judge earlier rejected the parents' request to dismiss the case. Quote, getting to the heart of the coconut now. Maybe I have a dirty mind, maybe the judge did it on purpose, or maybe it's just an odd analogy, but coconut is an odd analogy for this case. Quote, getting to the heart of the coconut now. The legal issue before the court is whether Paul and Beth converted David's pornography to their their own use, end quote. Maloney wrote earlier. He found that they did. But the loud of coconut, she called the doctor, woke him up and said, doctor. When it comes to Viva Fry vlogs, you will laugh, sometimes you will cry, but you will always learn something. And today we are learning about the Michigan principle of law of conversion of property. Even if it is porno magazines and dirty films. In his latest ruling, he said, quote, as early as 1874, Michigan courts have recognized that conversion to one's own use was broad and could include destruction due to the converter's belief in the destroyer's items, deleterious effects, end quote. The Michigan Supreme Court confirmed that conclusion in 2015, Maloney wrote. Quote, in this case, there is no question that the destroyed property was David's property. Defendants repeatedly admitted that they destroyed the property and they do not dispute that they destroyed the property. Therefore, the court finds that there is no genuine dispute of material fact on David's statutory conversion claim, end Quote. And here's how you can see how the parties get to a motion for summary judgment. The parties agree on all the material facts. They just disagree on the conclusions of law to be drawn from those facts. So the judge doesn't need to go much further with the case. The judge could say, okay, look, we agree on all the facts. Here's my conclusion at law. The parents had suggested that the court could come to a different conclusion at law based on the accepted facts. That conclusion at law being that they were entitled to destroy the property because it was abandoned by their son. The judge does not come to that conclusion. But before we get there, more about the underlying family dispute. The parents Parents had called police on August 23, 2017 over unquote incident and asked their son to leave for at least three days. The son repeatedly contacted his parents and tried to retrieve his property from their home, the judge said. The human element, there are clearly issues between the son and his parents. The legal element, if he was asked to leave and he was asking for his property, it could not be abandoned property. The parents said they had told their son when he moved in that he could not bring pornography into their home or it would be destroyed. They also contended he had abandoned the property and said he could have mitigated his losses by removing it himself. The judge said the parents would not allow him back and that they said they would ship his property to him. The human element of this dispute, an elderly couple who are taking their 42-year-old son back into their home while he goes through a divorce, tells him not to bring pornography into their home or it will be destroyed. The legal element of this, the judge does not accept their defense that he abandoned the property when he left. Probably one of the most useless cases we are ever going to go over, except it really does highlight the human element of law that at the heart of every dispute are a group of individuals who are just incapable of resolving their own dispute in the absence of court intervention. And nothing is quite as depressing as when it is family fighting among family. I have had multiple cases of family members suing other family members. Sometimes it was for millions of dollars. Other times it was for tens of thousands of dollars. But every time it was extremely difficult to be the attorney in that file. Sometimes lawsuits are a symptom of a problem and not the cause of it. And this is especially true among family members. But at the very least, I hope you learned a little something about Michigan law. And if you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. If you want to support the channel, all of these support links are in the pinned comment. We've got PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar, YouTube membership. Robert Barnes and I have a page on Locals. It is called vivabarneslaw.locals.com. I am also on Rumble. And that's right, the reason why I did this vlog was because I will never again have a good opportunity to use this meme. It's Nudie Magazine Day! And now you know your vlog. Peace out.